Here are the 10 rules of Ikigai. Stay until the end because this could change your life. Ikigai is a Japanese concept that represents four fundamental principles that bring purpose and meaning to life. The word Ikigai itself is a compound of Iki, meaning life, and Gai, meaning worth, translating to a reason for being or a reason to wake up in the morning. Now a quick overview of the four components of Ikigai. What you love, what you're good at, what the world needs and what you can be paid for. That is the four things of Ikigai, but that's not what I'm talking about today. The 10 rules of Ikigai. Number one, stay active and don't retire. In the book Ikigai, a lot of the studies are, or nearly all of the studies, are based off of a village in Japan called Okinawa. In Okinawa, they never retire. Like They might do the actual work for a certain amount of years, but then when they stop doing that work they'll then tend to their gardens or they'll do things in the neighborhood with each other like build houses or they'll do artwork they'll never sit and like watch tv all day like the people of today and the people of the western world do when they retire they stay physically and mentally active so they go and do group activities where they do physical activities like sports like there was some sort of racquetball they played I think it was and then also they do things like crosswords and puzzles a lot of people give up on the things they enjoy when they do like actual work it takes up a lot of their time but those who give up on things they love doing do well lose their purpose in life and you need a purpose in life to live a long time so the thing that was shown in this book is that if you're like 99 this is just an old age let's say fairly old age and you do art and you've got a painting to finish, you'll always be thinking like subconsciously, I need to finish this painting, I need to finish this painting. So you won't like die as in from like boredom and your body thinking you're giving up because you're not doing anything in life. You've got a purpose. Whereas someone that retires at 50 and then sits about all day, there's actually a study where a lot of people die within two years after retirement because their body thinks they're dying and then they're just because they've got nothing to live for because they're not doing anything number two take it slow it's so important today in this fast-paced world to be mindful and present in the moment so many people are stuck in the past still thinking about what has happened before that they can't change or think about the future which you can kind of mold but you can't complete completely like make certain things happen in the future some things are out of your control being in a hurry is inversely proportional to quality of life as the old saying goes walk slowly and you'll go far it's important to slow down appreciate small joys and avoid the rush of modern life because a lot of people rush through life they'll get to 18 one i don't know a car then they'll want a house and they'll want a wife and anyway they'll just go through this cycle and want a high paying job and then they'll wake up and they'll be 50 and they'll realise they hate the job, they don't like their wife anymore, they've got all this debt and they're stuck and they can't get out now because people just keep looking to the future without planning the future. They just keep looking at what's to come. Number three, don't fill your stomach. Now this is different to any other life advice, but the Okinawans and some Japanese cultures use this concept called hara hachi bu where you eat until your stomach is only 80% full. So this is just good for eating habits and is healthy for you because you don't overload your digestive system. And as you know, it takes hours to digest some foods. And if you overeat, you take even longer to digest. And that obviously puts stress on your digestive system, which is just not good for your body. Also, if you don't digest things properly and foods ferment in your stomach, they pretty much turn to alcohol and go into your bloodstream and you get toxins in your bloodstream. But that's the whole nutritional side and that's why that's one reason why it's not good to overeat. And that is one of the reasons why they live so long. And it's because they get their nutritional, like, what they need in and kind of avoid what they don't need by like, toxins, by not eating too much. Number four, surround yourself with good friends. It's very important to have a good group of friends, but at the same time, it's not important to have 20, like loads of friends because you'll find that probably about 15 of them aren't actually good friends and it's way better to have a small group of good friends than a massive group of people that all talk about each other behind their back. So just even two friends, one's probably not enough because they're not always going to be there. But yeah, like two, three, four, good. And this is just for general 
happiness and communication and people there was just another study done that people that like single or people that don't have social interactions don't live as long as people that do and this is another thing to do with community and having like reason for being and one of the biggest reasons for being was like helping others in the like ikigai studies and this is a okinawan concept of maui a group of friends who support each other throughout life so there's people that are like friends for like 70 years and like even longer in this village and they all they're just all like family they hang out all the time go and have coffee with each other do sports with each other look after each other all like have a community where they like build a house together all that they're all there for each other all the time five get in shape for your next birthday many people don't do physical activity exercise anyway in life from leaving school and there's been a proper downfall in clubs and just everything and this is a direct impact on everyone's health and longevity because health is how you live a long time obviously it's not all luck health is not luck it's all what you do your nutrition and your fitness levels so it's a direct correlation to fitness level and life expectancy and longevity so yeah these okinawans and all ikigai is a massive part about being healthy and being fit and doing like i say doing exercise so there was another study where i think it was norway or netherlands i can't remember one of the ends i think it were anyway and i saw a little study or a bit of news about how there was one of the most unhealthy countries and had loads of obesity and health problems and so someone in the government took it upon themselves to change this. So they started removing all bad food and putting the healthy food instead, making like school lunches be like fruit and veg and having all these clubs put in place like sports clubs. And anyway, now they're one of the most healthy countries in the world. So, and they have high life expectancy and they also have a good quality of life. Like they're one of the happiest countries in the world, I'm pretty sure. Another thing, you notice the people that actually have a good life when they're old, the people that have stayed fit all their life, they've either done yoga or weights exercises or ran. They're usually, when you see like 90 year olds, there's some that are sat in a chair that sit there all day that are just don't have a good quality of life and there's some that can still get about. They look like 30 years younger than they are. But there was another thing on this, which was the Hunzans, which was in the Himalayas, I think some mountains near pakistan this were years ago like in the 90s i think before they then it all got messed up when uh, all of us sort of western people and people like not part of their little civilization went in and it got messed up but anyway before that there was like 90 year olds like climbing mountains and running and bare chested barefoot in the mountains cold snow and they could literally do more like strenuous exercise and work than a 25 year old of the western world and there was 90 and they looked way younger they didn't get ill there was no such thing as colds and all that number six smile this is a psychological thing where for you and the other person if you smile at them usually they smile back and smiling releases like certain hormones like if you feel sad and you smile then you'll like get happier and this is another person there was a person that had depression and they like put sticky notes everywhere and it'd be like smile or laugh or all that and you can literally treat yourself into being happy also how you can treat yourself into being sad or staying sad so people that are sad and sit and listen to sad music you're going to be sad whereas if you're sad and listen to happy music go to the gym go for a run you'll be happier you might not be like fully happy but anyway and then another psychological thing if you have a positive outlook on life and an open mind that's great for you in life because you're going to go a lot further than a closed-minded person that don't believe anything's possible all closed-minded people they never invent something or make anything better they just complain or say it's impossible but the one good thing about closed-minded people is when they talk to open-minded people they just give them motivation to prove them wrong number seven reconnect with nature now this is one of the things that has been really lost and why there's so many health problems as well because we've gone from living outside having high oxygen levels we might have had like huts but they still would take oxygen in whereas our houses nowadays don't get much oxygen and also the oxygen even that pure anymore because of all the cars and pollution which is a real thing but yeah there's things about that anyway so nature 
it's very important spending time in nature just for your general mental well-being because as you know we used to be a part of the natural world and so we should return to it every now and then to re recharge our batteries the okinawans are always out and about like walking on the beach or attending to the vegetable garden or they walk everywhere they'd much rather walk than drive i don't think they drive anyway but anyway he said something like that in the book so for us getting into nature a great thing like oxygen is a big thing on like helping cancer i've heard like if you get a high like oxygen level a lot then i'm sure there was some study to do with that that like shrunk cancer i might be wrong don't like take my word for it but something that's in my brain for some reason anyway oxygen it makes sense it is our whole livelihood like we wouldn't be here without oxygen so it makes sense if it heals you and then the last thing on number seven about reconnecting with nature there was another thing i saw that was like this is medicine this isn't and one was the mountains where like you get fresh air you're seeing the world you're exploring and then this isn't was like medication which is all made in a lab and it's all synthetic and toxic to you number eight give thanks now again this is another mental thing which is just about practicing gratitude and this has positive impacts on your mental health there's a clear thing of like mental health and then people at journal and journaling just helps you get out of your like head kind of like get it onto paper and write about your thoughts it stops you having brain fog it helps you be like happier and more grateful for what you have rather than think about what you don't have you write down everything you have like there's some people that don't have clean water there's some people that have to go out and get the food like go and kill it and find it and they're starving like there's some people in a cancer like bed like that aren't gonna get any better kind of thing so you gotta think what you have rather than what you don't have number nine live in the moment so this is linked to one of the ones above this is linked to taking it slow live in the moment again you just got to be mindful and live in the present because it's all you have and again no point worrying about the future or the past you can't change either of them so just make the most of it and make it worth remembering like but on the whole future thing you can kind of like do things today to make your future better in a way like delayed gratification of things like learning or just generally not doing things that are going to put your future in a bad because there is certain things you can make your future worse or better but like i said earlier you can't control some things that will happen like you could have a plan 10 year plan and do things every day to get there but then you could get it by a bus or you could plan on moving to australia let's say and you live in england and then you meet a woman that you're both very compatible and then you're not going to move to australia unless they want to move with you possibly then the last thing about living in the moment again fast-paced world work all that a lot of people bring the work home and can't forget about it and a lot of people do sport and events or do things away from work and they're still thinking about work and you just got to completely shut off from it when you finish work you finish work you're done forget about it and live your life because work takes up like 90 percent of your life like i wouldn't let it take up even more when you're actually at home and you're meant to be enjoying it number 10 and probably the most important is follow your ikigai like it's all about purpose in life if you have a purpose in life you will live longer because you've got something to do whereas if you have no purpose in life not only will other people not like you because you don't do anything you don't have a drive for anything you'll probably not like yourself because you have a very boring life if you don't have anything to work forward to or anything that you have a proper passion in so there's a passion inside of you a unique talent that gives meaning to your days and drives you to share the best of yourself until the very end if you don't know what your ikigai is yet as victor frankl said says your mission is to discover it that's, that's probably the reason for being discover your passion and pursue it try and make your life better in other people's as well so reflect on your passions strengths values and opportunities to find your ikigai so think what are you good at and then think what do i enjoy try and link them together and then if you want to do it as your job try and link where there's a need in society that links all three together and just link each one together this is the diagram which will be on my next video so that's the diagram now to summarize number one stay active and don't retire 
Number two, take it slow. Number three, don't fill your stomach. Number four, surround yourself with good friends. Number five, get in shape for your next birthday. Number six, smile. Number seven, reconnect with nature. Number eight, give thanks. Number nine, live in the moment. And number 10, follow your ikigai. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn more on how to live a long and happy life, well, I made a video on exactly that with wisdom from 100 plus year olds, 100 plus year olds, 100 year olds and above. So click on screen now.